In this video, we're going to have a look at the different type of 3D matrix transformations that can be performed. Before we look at the actual transformations themselves, it helps to look at the 3D coordinate system that's used. So the three axes that were used are labelled X, Y and Z, as you'd expect, but the directions of the axes are a little bit different than you'd expect. So the X axis usually comes out of the page and to the left. The Y axis again points out of the page but to the right and it's actually at right angles to the X axis. And then you've got the Z axis that points directly upwards in the same plane as the page. So let's label those three sides X, Y and Z. So X there, Y and the Z axis and that's a right angle, that's a right angle. So when we talk about the plane x equals zero, we want all the x coordinates on that plane to be zero. So let's trace this x axis back to zero. And we can see that if we move up in the z direction, x is still equal to zero. If we move in the y direction, x is still equal to zero. The only way we can get an x coordinate to change is by going that way or that way. So that means anywhere in this plane here that I'm shading green, is x equals zero. So this wall of the room made by x, y, and z axis, this can be referred to as the plane x equals zero, or sometimes called the y, z plane. Likewise now, if I want to try and make the plane y equals zero, I trace the y axis back to the origin. And if I move up, it doesn't change the y coordinate. If I move in the x direction, it doesn't change the y coordinate. So if I shade this one in now, this here is the plane y equals zero, because everywhere on this plane, y equals zero. So we're writing that down there. So that's the plane y equals zero, or called the x, z plane, because it's made by the x and z axis. And finally, z equals zero, trace the z axis back down to the origin. Now, if we move in this direction, we're not going to change the z coordinate. If we move in this direction, we won't change the z coordinate. Therefore, the third plane, z equals zero, is this one here. So, shade that in blue, like that. And that's the plane z equals zero, or the xy plane. And if the diagram is at all unclear, imagine there's a room with two walls, one wall there, one wall there, and a floor. So I draw a man standing in the room. Hopefully that helps you visualize what the diagram means a bit better. So now moving on to the different types of transformation that we'll be expected to look at in 3D. And we're gonna start with reflections. So the first thing we're gonna do is have a look at a reflection in the plane x equals zero. So I'm gonna call that matrix ref x equals zero. Might be given a different name in your exam board. I've just made this name up now. So let's take this point here on the x-axis. If we reflect through the plane x equals zero, i.e. this plane here, this point here will be made negative in the x-direction. So it'll be reflected through a plane back to the opposite side of the plane. So to capture that in the matrix, well, the y-coordinates stay the same. So we'll have the identity elements for the y-coordinates. The z-coordinates stay the same the identity ele element for the z-coordinates. However, the x-coordinates are made negative. So we reflect that in the matrix by making the x-coordinate negative. By a similar process, reflecting in the plane y equals zero, what we see is that, take this coordinate for example, if we reflect it to the opposite side of the plane y equals zero, starts there, but ends up on the opposite side there. So the y coordinates get made negative. So the x coordinates stay the same, the y coordinate gets made negative, and the z coordinate stays the same. By a similar process again, reflection in z equals zero, one naught naught, naught one naught, naught naught minus one. So now looking at stretches, 
or a stretch is defined as being in a single direction taking a coordinate and multiplying it by a factor so for example if we want to do a stretch in the x direction by scale factor k we take all the x coordinates and we multiply them by k so we times the x coordinate by k however the y coordinate and the z coordinate remain unchanged that's a stretch by scale factor k move that down a bit in x direction let's do another stretch stretch by scale factor k in y direction so the x coordinate remains unchanged it's only the y values that get multiplied by k and there we have it and the third one stretch by scale factor k in the z direction and again the x coordinates remain unchanged y unchanged and it's the z coordinates that get multiplied by k combining all three of those together gives us what's called an enlargement so enlargement is a stretch in all three directions so enlargement by scale factor k and it's implied that it's in all three directions so it times all the x coordinates by k all the y coordinates by k and all the z coordinates by k and finally there's the rotation matrices now these are for rotations anti-clockwise around a particular labeled axis so this is a rotation anti-clockwise around the x-axis around the y-axis and around the z-axis so now drawing a diagram of the x y and z axis i think it's important to define what anti-clockwise around an axis actually means so labeling the axes x y and z as previously defined now to visualize the anti-clockwise rotation around the x-axis what you've got to be doing is looking directly into the x-axis so looking in this direction look directly into the head of the arrow and if you look directly into the head of the arrow it's an anti-clockwise rotation that way likewise if we're looking into the y-axis look directly into the head of the arrow in an anti-clockwise rotation would be going that way around the y-axis and again the z-axis look directly into it and anti-clockwise rotation would be going that way around the z-axis so that's all the different types of transformation that you're likely to come across one final fact that you need to learn is that the determinant of a three by three matrix is the scale factor of the change in volume of the shape under the transformation so for example if the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix was 27 then any shape with volume 1 after the transformation has been applied would end up with volume 27 if it had volume 2 originally after the transformation it would have 2 times 27, 54. It would end up with volume 54. Let's try and attempt an exam question. Knowing all these facts now, let's put it into practice. 
and we'll do an exam question. So just pasting that exam question there. So it says, write down the three by three matrix M1 that represents a reflection in the plane Y equals zero. Well, a reflection in the plane Y equals zero, all the Y coordinates are made negative. So the X coordinates stay the same. So the identity column appears there, but the Y coordinates are made negative and the Z coordinates stay the same. So that's the matrix M1 that reflects in the plane Y equals zero. Part two, write down a single transformation represented by the matrix M2. Well, for this one, we're gonna to turn to our formula booklet and we're gonna look at all the different matrices that it could be, compare it to the ones we've got. We can actually see that that matrix there is most similar to this one here the Rx, the rotation matrix anti-clockwise about the x-axis. So let's take that matrix and copy and paste it. So we can see that it has the identity column for x, much like this one here. And we can see that there's two elements here, the same, much like there are here, and two elements here, that appear to be the same, but actually they're the negative of each other. However, zero is the negative of itself, therefore most closely matches this one here. So I know that cos theta here equals minus one. And I also know that sine theta equals naught by comparing the terms. So two things, both for which sine theta equals zero and cos theta equals minus one. So there's your sine theta graph, which equals zero there and there, and cos theta equaling minus one there. Ah, we found it. Cos theta equals minus one there, and sine theta equals naught there. So this is the angle here, so 180 degrees. So it's a rotation, 180 degrees, and we'll write anti-clockwise just to get into good habit, but actually for 180 degrees, it doesn't matter. 180 degrees clockwise is the same as 180 degrees anti-clockwise around the X axis anti-clockwise so that's part two done so moving on to part three find the determinants of M1 and M2 Well, actually, this is one where your calculator comes in useful, and we can see by the number of marks available, i.e. only two, that it's not expecting us to do much working at all. So putting this straight into the calculator, we're going to go to Menu, and it's Mode 4, is Matrices Mode. I'm going to define Matrix A to be M1. So we want it to be a 3 by 3 matrix. So the first row is 1, then a 0, then a 0 because the calculator enter, enters matrices by rows. Zero, minus one, zero, and zero, zero, one. Okay, so now that we've entered that, that's saved as matrix A. So operation, and I wanna do a matrix calculation, option three. Operation, and scroll down, and I can see determinant is an option there. So the determinant, press operation again, matrix A equals minus one. So the determinant of M1 equals minus one. The determinant of M2, so we go back to the calculator, operation, I'm gonna define a matrix, this time define matrix B. Again, we want it to be three by three matrix, and let's enter matrix M2 into that. So we can see it's, if we move the calculator across here, the first row is one, zero, zero. Second row is zero, minus one, zero. And the third is zero, zero, minus one. Operation, matrix calculation, operation, scroll down, to get the determinant function. Operation, now it's matrix B that we want to find the determinant of. 
which is 1. So the determinant of m2 is 1. And part b, that was part a, so 3a, 3b, explain how the signs and magnitudes of these determinants relate to the transformations represented by the matrices m1 and m2. Well, m1, we can see the determinants minus 1. So m1 represents a change in volume scale factor 1 i.e. volume unchanged but because the sign's negative it's minus 1 the orientation of the shape has changed but because negative the orientation of the shape changes so for m2 the volume and orientation remain unchanged okay so that's part three done so part four finally find the matrix m3 where m3 is m1 m2 so again we can just use the calculator here so matrix one times matrix two so operation matrix a times and we'll save matrix 2 in b so matrix a times matrix b equals that there 1 naught 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 1 naught 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 minus 1 if we're reading columns 1 naught 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 1 naught 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 minus 1 and that's equal to m3 and the question asked us go scrolling back up describe a single transformation represented by the matrix m3 well, we can see that the x coordinates remain unchanged the y coordinates remain unchanged it's the z that's been made negative here therefore it's a reflection in the plane z equals zero so that was part a that we've just done part b all the z corners have been times by minus one so it's a reflection in the plane z equals zero and that's the question done so that's basically in a nutshell three by three matrix transformations for more videos like this subscribe to our youtube channel and to find out more about our skype tuition and revision courses go to a-levelmathsrevision.com